I'm going to talk to you about another new frontier to complement our explorations on Earth and in space. And what I want to talk to you about how we can together manufacture the future. Everything that we do in 3D is disruptive, it's transformative, it's impactful, and it's going to touch everything. It's going to change the way that we design, it's going to influence what and how we create things, and it's going to bring about, I think, an era of localized manufacturing uh, in big ways. We invented it, believe it or not, 30 years ago this year, Chuck Hall invented 3D printing because he wanted to help uh, an ailing car industry in Detroit compress their time to market and regain competitive advantage. It took 30 years of innovation and perseverance to invent it, to advance it, and now we are democratizing it by, by actually opening access to everybody through manufacturing systems, school, children type systems, and cloud printing so that everybody everywhere could harness the power of 3D printing. And so, you know, to us, now it's your turn. What's the big deal about 3D printing? The big deal is that when you begin to deposit material one layer at a time, complexity is free of charge. There is no burden, there is no overhead, you're not any more bound and constrained by any of the traditional manufacturing processes. It's sustainable because there is little to no waste. It gives you the opportunity to create millions of one-of-a-kind items without any tooling and inventory. But even more importantly, it allows you to mass produce highly complex shapes that could never have been produced in traditional manufacturing. Shape of a turbine blade and where the holes go and what the coating is, that might be the difference in one or two points of fuel burn in the way a jet engine works, and that's billions of dollars for our customers in terms of performance. Now, the way that's made today is kind of subtractive, right? You, you get a block of something, and you weld it, and you arc it, and you, you know, take the, the scrap, and it goes someplace, and that's how you make those parts today. And 3D printing allows you to make that product right the first time. It allows you to make it from the core up, so you basically don't have as much waste, the tooling's cheaper, the cycle time's faster, and that is the holy grail. And that is the holy grail, and this was in a panel that uh, we did together at the Atlantic Magazine on the future of manufacturing uh, a few months ago. Uh, and you don't have to go all the way to the turbine blade. Uh, we did uh, a little exercise that if you only printed your safety belt buckle on an airliner through the lifetime of an airliner, you can save up to three million liters of jet fuel. So, you know, we can start just by weight reduction. Automotive has been one of the early adapters because we started by wanting to help automotive and what we're seeing today is the migration of our systems from the design and prototype labs onto the manufacturing floor, an opportunity to begin to uh, put high impact, low weight, high temperature, very durable and complex structures that allow the manufacture of performance vehicles in a way that could not have been accomplished before. And the opportunity also to begin to create flexible, agile bridge manufacturing that overcomes any unintended interruptions in supply chain, and it's going to production. There is no question uh, about that. Uh, the area that is the fastest growing for us is the manufacturing of patient-specific medical devices. Uh, every in-the-ear hearing aid today that goes in the ear canal is printed. Most of your dental restorations are printed, and companies like Conformis are leading the charge in patient-specific implants. And the big deal is that not just the implant is printed, but all of the surgical tools 
that are now planned and manufactured specifically for each procedure. When you stop to think about that, that significantly improves the outcome, removes the variability, and enhances the quality of every medical procedure. And so you might ask, okay, Avi, what's the big deal? We know that this has been around for a while. We know we use it in prototyping. Does it really scale? Can you really think about a factory of the future that makes millions of complex shapes, or better yet, millions of one of a kind? And one of the uh, examples that I like to cite, because it's really unique, is uh, Invisalign, the clear uh, aligners that you have, because just last year alone, in a room that is about the size of this ballroom, uh, Align Technologies manufactured over 17 million one-of-a-kinds in a factory of the future that exists today that was fully mechanized and automated to deliver 17 million one-of-a-kind items, economically, affordably, and in the here and now. The Manufacturing Innovation Institute in Youngstown, Ohio, a once shuttered warehouse, is now a state-of-the-art lab where new workers are mastering the 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. There's no reason this can't happen in other towns. So tonight, I'm announcing the launch of three more of these manufacturing hubs, where businesses will partner with the Department of Defense and Energy to turn regions left behind by globalization into global centers of high-tech jobs. And I ask this Congress to help create a network of 15 of these hubs and guarantee that the next revolution in manufacturing is made right here in America. We can get that done. So I want to talk to you. I mean, it's amazing that uh, you know, when you have an attractive business, even the president is auditioning for the VP of business development role. <laughs> but uh, what I want to talk to you about is how we're going to reinvent the future starting today, how we're doing it already. So let's start with retail. Uh, this is a project that we have done with Disney. Uh, to begin to reinvent the retail experience so that it becomes immersive, personalized, customized, and on an emotional level, when you think about brand equity and what this brand equity really means, the opportunity to empower millions of people to co-create a unique experience with their brand. It takes advantage of all the converging technologies that we're talking about, sensing and cloud computing, and artificial intelligence to bring home in the most powerful way a completely personalized experience. You can see it with the Disney princess, and you can see it with uh, the carbonized uh, experience. And that's only the, the tip of the spear in retail. You know, we think that uh, there is an opportunity here to completely reinvent retail. And there is an opportunity to also create completely new exchanges and marketplaces uh, for people to begin to upload designs, share designs, customize them, monetize them, and create apps. You can see on uh, the left of your screen an example from a startup in London. It's called Makey Labs. They created apps that allow girls to basically design their own dolls. Uh, what's the big deal? The big deal is that you begin to unleash little girls' creativity when they think that they can actually design it, create it, make it, and shape it. On the right, you can see some of what we do on cubify.com that Peter mentioned. Uh, it's a completely new revolutionized way to think about how we can infuse gamification and creativity and open all of our sophisticated manufacturing systems for the benefit of kids and adults and educators and inventors. Healthcare, you saw a little bit of what we do with patient-specific. That's only the beginning. We're now using Kinect sensors and turning them into medical scanners. Uh, we're using sophisticated feature recognition software to stitch it together and create uh, a variety of uh, prosthetics, fairings, braces, and allowing people to reclaim their symmetry and to celebrate their deformities in a fashionable way, like beautiful tattoos, instead of hiding them and isolating from them. 
uh, and we see that as a life-changing experience. And this is what's next. What's next is fracture and scoliosis and the opportunity to do it in a way that's cost-effective, fits under existing reinsurance insurance reimbursement codes, and allows you to function and celebrate a condition instead of hide, isolate, and be encumbered by it. Interactions are going to change. We have amazing technology now uh, in terms of sensing uh, and scanning engines that are going to redefine how we speak. And there is an opportunity here to develop a whole new language of creativity through gesturing, as you can see with some of the early works that we're doing with the lip motion devices. Uh, and as uh, the uh, prime sense type categories are progressing, uh, it's going to completely redefine how we digitize everything around us and how we manipulate everything around us, creating new creativity languages. And I want you to save that thought because that's at the heart of my challenge. Food creations are going to change. I'm personally passionate about chocolate, so what you see on the right is my own Skunk Works creation. You know, I want to create the Keurig, the Keurig printer, you know, with dark, spicy, chili-based chocolate that I could print for myself. Uh, so that's my early creation. Probably will come to a market near you sometime later this year. And with all that good news, there is always the unintended and the most celebrated cases of what happens when you can point, click, and counterfeit, or easily come to illegal possession of weapons because you can now print in an undetectable material, uh, the, the lower case of an AR-15. The, the, the thing for me here is that you know, craftsmen, craftsmen could have done this, you know, for decades. The, the tipping point here is that with 3D printing, craftsmanship is democratized. And so now if you have the file, anybody can do it. And those are the things that we need to uh, understand as we challenge the entire social and legal system with all this disruptive technology. 3D me, who do you wanna be? So now you can do it with two pictures. Oh, cool. I made it, Mom. 3D me. And you don't even need to scan 3D yourself. 3D me. I hope I look this good on my wedding day. 3D me. Wild East, Wild West. 3D me, bring out your best. I can slay dragons. 3D me, who do you want to be? So no longer scanning, just pictures. It's going to change the way that we think about how we accessorize ourselves, another fundamental human condition need to differentiate. So you'll see more and more of that happening. Uh, you're gonna see it in bio printing, uh, all the way from uh, bone replacements to organ replacement. The research and the startup work is quite advanced. And you will see us continuing to democratize access and price points all the way down to a sub $500 for the next generation of these little beauties for eight-year-olds and bona fide industrial manufacturing platforms you know, that will reside on every factory's floor in the future. But we live in exponential times and my concern is that uh, not everybody is coming along for the journey because in exponential times, we are experiencing an exponential divide between the closed-minded and the open-minded. And I think that uh, that represents us with a real challenge and a real opportunity in education. How can, and this is, this is my plea to you, I'm absolutely passionate about education. And to me, education is a more important bottom line, even for a public company, uh, than the EPS bottom line. And the question is, how do we unleash kids' creativity and how do we impart this important language of creativity to kids so when they get to the workplace, they are fully equipped? My name is Caleb and 
I'm eight. My name's Lauren and I'm 11 years old. My name's Lydia and I'm 10 years old. Hi, my name's Lydia and I'm 10 years old. So this is a project that started by uh, Singularity University summer program students that we now decided to incubate inside of uh, 3D systems because we are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to make good, to find new ways how to create the platform, the infrastructure, the ecosystem, the learning, the curriculum, and we can't do it alone. We need help. Uh, kids get it instantly, they understand it, they want to use it, and the insights that we're discovering is that there is a new kind of literacy that needs to be born out of it, which is not necessarily about reading and writing, it's about a worldless, universal language of creativity. And so there is an enormous power here to be unleashed. There are opportunities, I think, for some real X prizes. I invented a safer football helmet. I invented a robot companion and assistant. So my challenge to you, my cry for help is I'm passionate about education. We're already doing all of the democratization that we can on the device and the affordability and the accessibility. I'm willing to do anything that I can to put it in the hands of children. I need like-minded people that help create the ecosystem, the platform, the social networking, the universal language of creativity that could potentially transform how we create, make, and give our kids a better chance for sustainable entrepreneurship uh, in a different economy than what we live in today. So thank you for giving this, me this opportunity. Mm -hmm.